Do you see America as the leading democracy in the world? Yeah, I think like hard yes. Um, the the thing that I would say is that being the best doesn't mean you can't get better. You don't have room to grow. <laughs> and certainly um, I would say there is a lot of room for us to grow. And that's why in our founding documents, right, they, they talk about um, not a perfect union, but a more perfect union. And I think that idea of always striving for excellence, for better, for um, just a more robust and dynamic and vibrant version of ourselves is part of the American spirit, is part of that like American optimism that I think has been a really critical part to what has um, moved us forward. I think when you focus on the future, that is really galvanizing for, for people. You know, this, um, this past week, I had the opportunity to meet a man named Bobby Wine. I don't know if you know who Bobby Wine is, but um, he uh, is the leader of the opposition movement in Uganda. Uh, and he challenged the current president, who has been president for nearly 40 years, so some might not really call that a, a free and fair set of elections. Um, but he has been a cultural force in Uganda has galvanized young people um, to get involved, to come to the polls, to make their voices heard. Um, and he and his wife, Barbie, were um, recently in conversation with me. And, you know, I asked them, like, are there things that we can learn from you as we seek to renew and revitalize our own democracy? And here's what Barbie, you know, Bobby Wine's wife told me. She said, America is like the eldest child in democracy. What you do sets the tone for the rest of us. And so if you don't lead, if you are not the role model for us, then everything that we do is like writing on water. And to me, that really drove home that despite all of the struggles, despite all of the ways that we wish we could be better, that we work to be better, we are the leaders and the things that we do have consequences. And that to me, um, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. Um, but I think unequivocally, you know, we have to see ourselves as, as leaders and then we have to be responsible with that power. You said you talked about a more perfect union. And I have a mentor who says there's no end to better. And that's really that's really an important thing to keep in mind is individually, as our community, as our state, as our country. Globally, we can get better. And I am a firm believer that we live in a world of abundance, many of us, right? But I believe we all can live in this world of abundance. And I think of world of abundance being, I have a refrigerator, so I'm able to store food for tomorrow. I have a few extra dollars in my pocket. I'm not talking about lavish, lavish lifestyles, but I truly believe that the world can experience abundance. And that's, that's better than right now. And, and America can lead the way. That's, that's just kind of my personal feelings about it. Yeah. Well, and this sounds sort of weird to say in the context of politics, but it really is about leading with love. And I think you get to that notion of abundance when um, you think about infusing love into your work, into your policies, into your connections with, with other people. Um, and instead, I think what we see is fear. And that's what leads to the scarcity mindset where um, you you don't get sort of the um, fairness or the abundance as, as you talk about. Um, and this paradigm of, of love versus fear, I think, is something that um, maybe if we talked a little bit more uh, in, in the context of our politics, we'd be in a better place. But it does sound kind of weird to talk about a, a loving politics. <laughs> <laughs>